Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Bedtime Stories. I hope you are all well and have you all brushed your teeth? And are you ready in your pyjamas? Who knows what the next thing is? Let's start Bedtime Stories. Now my children, last time we were reading the book, Stories from the Quran. So I will finish off where we left off. Can any of you remember where it was? I'll give you a clue. The honoured guests. That's where we left off last time. So let's get started. Now, if you're not already in your PJs and you haven't brushed your teeth, don't worry. You've got plenty of time to do it after. Now, let's get ready for the story. <clears throat> the honoured guest. One day, some angels came to Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam, in a human form. The Prophet Ibrahim did not recognize them. When the angels entered the house of the Prophet Ibrahim salam, they said, peace, peace. The Prophet Ibrahim returned their greeting. Seeing that they were strangers, the Prophet Ibrahim salam, rushed inside the house and brought grilled and calf for them. He placed it before them, but the angels did not touch the food. Seeing that the stranger did not have the food, the Prophet Ibrahim salam, grew afraid of them. But they said, have no fear. The angels gave them good news of a son who would become a wise person. His wife did not believe the words of the angels and came crying and beating her face. Surely I am a barren woman. Surely I cannot have any children. But the angels told her, this is from your Lord. Your Lord is Allah and he is all wise and all knowing. So Allah knows everything, don't worry. That's just a picture of the storm. There was a big storm happening. The Prophet Ibrahim salam, asked the angels, what do you want? They said, we have been sent forth to a wicked nation. A wicked nation means somebody that's not very nice. So that we may bring down on them a shower of clay stones marked by your Lord for the destruction of their sins. And so the angels destroyed the bad people who used to live at the site where the Dead Sea is situated today. So the bad people lived in an area now known as the Dead Sea. Maybe you could do a bit of research on that after. The best loved son, we are now on the next chapter. The Prophet Yaqub, or we can say Jacob, alayhi salam, was a pious man. He lived in a canon some 30 miles north of Jerusalem. He and his family lived in tents. He had 12 sons. Yusuf was the second one amongst his sons. One day, Yusuf had an unusual dream in which 11 stars and the sun and the moon all bowed down to him. When his father heard about the dream, he understood that great things will happen to his beloved son. For their part, being aware of the father's love for Yusuf, salam, the 10 big brothers became very, very jealous and they did not like Yusuf. They would go off after the family's flocks, grumbling and moaning and being very sad. They became so jealous that their father loved their younger brother more. So they hatched a plan to get rid of their brother Yusuf. They did not want him in the house anymore because they were full of jealousy. One day they took him with them pretending that they were going out for a picnic. As they reached the well, 
They took him without him realising what would happen to him and they dragged him to the well and threw him into the well. Poor Yusuf didn't know what was going on. He screamed as loud as he could and, and nobody could hear him. But they paid no attention to his cry. The well was very deep, but it was dried up. Yusuf landed on the dry bottom of the well with a big thud. There would be no climbing, no slippery slides to escape. But he was a brave boy and he stopped crying. His courage never failed. He turned towards Allah, his Lord, for help. Now he was stuck in this big well because of his big brothers. They weren't being very nice to him, were they? <clears throat> While his dear father was upset and crying for Yusuf, Yusuf lay at the bottom of a dark, dark well for about three nights all alone. In the meantime, a caravan from Syria heading for Egypt camped near the well. One of the caravan people threw his bucket into the well to fetch some water because back then they didn't have water in taps. They had these big wells dug up in the ground and then they would release their bucket and they would take water out. So if you can imagine, there is a caravan with people and somebody put a bucket in the well. But to his surprise, when he pulled up the bucket, there was a good looking boy, a handsome boy inside the bucket. The caravan people took him to Egypt and sold him to an Egyptian prince who was called the Aziz. The Aziz took the innocent boy and good natured boy to his wife and told her, to take good care of him. The years passed, many, many years passed, and Yusuf, he didn't know where he was. He was sold in Egypt. He grew up to be a young, remarkable man. <clears throat> he was clever, he was beautiful, and he was charming. The Aziz's wife, whose name was Zuleika, felt very, very attached to Yusuf, alayhi salam but he kept his distance and never responded to her. Zuleika threatened to have him sent to prison. In a great anguish, Yusuf salam, prayed to Allah, O oh Lord, prison will be better for me. What am I being asked to do? But even though Yusuf was innocent, Zuleika decided to put him in prison for no reason. So she was being bad to him as well. Prison is not a nice place to go. Prison opens another chapter in the life of our Prophet Yusuf salam. Here he met two other people that were also in the prison. They were servants in the royal court who had displeased the king both of them had strange dreams, the meaning of which were correctly given by Prophet Yusuf One told him that he saw the pressing grapes to make a drink called wine. The other one said he saw a dream and he saw himself carrying bread on his head, which was pecked up by birds, so the birds were eating the bread that was sitting on top of his head. One of them, a cup bearer, a cup bearer, somebody who holds a cup, was freed and taken back into the king's service. One day the king dreamt that seven lean cows were eating up seven big ones and seven green ears of corn were being replaced by seven dried up ones. No one was able to say what this dream was about, 
It was a very, very unusual dream. At that time, the request of the cupbearer, Yusuf alayhi salam, interpreted the dream. He explained that in the land of Egypt, there would be seven years of happiness and good. But following the seven years of abundance, which is goodness, there would come seven years of dreadful famine, which means there'd be no food for, for them to eat and no crops to grow in their farm. The king greatly liked his explanation. And then he, he said, you have to look after and be in charge. So the king made Prophet Yusuf in charge. Years later, Yusuf salam, had become the most trusted minister of the king of Egypt. The seven good years passed. Then the bad years that were to come that Yusuf salam, had said already came and everyone was hungry. There was no crops and there was no food. Just like Prophet Yusuf, Yusuf salam, had explained. When no crops grew, the famine held the land into its grips back in the land of Canaan. Yaqub and his sons were hit by famine too. Therefore, the ten sons travelled to Egypt in search of grain. When they came to the chief in the stores of the house of Egypt, Yusuf recognised them, but little did they know that this minister, for whom they had come to seek help from, was their own brother. It was their little brother, Yusuf, the one they pushed and pulled and dragged and pushed him in the well. This was their little brother, Yusuf, whom had become a strong man and a minister. Yusuf received them honourably. He was happy to receive them and asked them about their family. Yusuf salam, gave them an ample supply of grain, put their money back in their pockets. The brothers made future visits then Yusuf salam, revealed his identity to them. So all that time they didn't know that was their brother. He was being kind and generous and forgive him, forgiving. And he gave them food, rice. Eventually Yusuf revealed who he really was. He revealed his identity to them and forgave them for their crime, what they did to him. He asked them to bring, their, to bring his parents Finally, the family was re reunited and Yusuf salam, embraced his parents and did them honour by making them sit on the throne and saying, welcome to Egypt in safety if Allah wills. Seeing the splendour of the high position of Yusuf, they all fell to prostrate. As a mark of thanksgiving, this Yusuf salam, reminded his father is the meaning of my dream, which my Lord has fulfilled. The dream that Yusuf salam, had as a little boy was of the son, the prostrating themselves before him had at last come true. So the dream he had as a little boy was all about the journey that he was going to go through and the hardship and all the horrible things his brothers did to him was all a test from Allah. Because then finally Yusuf became in a very high position in Egypt. He was the minister of the king. Should we read another story? The story of Prophet Shuaib. Are we ready? Are we still comfortable? Okay, long ago, the people of 
Madain and Acre settled on the Arabian coast of the Red Sea. The area to the east of the Lower Egypt extends westwards from the present day Gulf of Aqaba, deep into Sinai Peninsula, as far as the mountain of Moab. Now these are districts and areas just um, under Egypt. The people of Madian and Acre were at the first followers, were the first followers of Prophet Ibrahim salam. But over the next 500 years, they did wrong things, they were dishonest and they were being bad. Then Allah sent the Prophet Shuaib to them, to these people to show them the right path. He warned them to be honest in weight and measures and not to trick others or do bad things. Prophet Shuaib was sent down to these people to help them, to remind them of the blessings of Allah and showered on them to remember how grateful they should be and to worship Allah. Remember how he manipulated you when you were a few, but in number. Sorry, multiplied you, not manipulated you. How he multiplied you, how he made you bigger. Multiplied means when you add more on. But the elders of his people rejected him saying, Shuaib, much of what you say we cannot understand. We know how weak you are in your mindset. They, threat they threatened to drive him out and his followers. They did not want them in the village. From their homeland, Shuaib salam, said, I do not want to argue with you for what would mean doing what I forbid you to do. I am trying only to help you, nor can I succeed without Allah's help. In him I have put my trust. I trust in him. My Lord is Allah. I turn to say sorry for whatever I have done wrong. I am just a messenger giving you the message from your Lord. His people replied, but for his tribe, they would have stoned him. My people said, Shuaib salam, have you more regards for my tribe than for Allah? Dare you turn your backs upon him? My Lord knows about all of your actions. Allah can see everything that you do. If you don't be good and you don't remember Allah and you don't listen to him and you don't believe in him, Allah will punish you. They were punished by a big earthquake. And when morning came, they were lying flat in their houses as if those who drove away Shu'ab had never lived there. They tried to get rid of the prophet who only came to warn them. But as they did not listen and they were being very rude, Allah gave a big earthquake. Now, do we know what earthquake is? It's not very nice, is it? The whole earth shakes, the floors, the houses, everything collapses. Can you imagine how bad that was? So it's very important that we always listen and try our best to make Allah happy by following the duties that we have to do every day as a Muslim, which means a believer. Right back to the story. <clears throat> Those who treated Shu'aib nicely and kindly did not suffer. This, this story teaches us in dealing with others fairly, especially to be good to people and not to lie or do things behind their backs, which is called deceiving them. Uh take their property and their possessions. We should never take things by force. We should never take things that don't belong to us. 
It teaches us to always follow the rules of honesty, trustworthiness, and truthfulness. It's always good to be honest. And if we want something, we can ask for it. But if somebody doesn't want to give it to us, we can ask again and be patient. But we must never take things that don't belong to us. And we must always listen and follow our prophets. The patient man's miracle. Now, I will stop there and I will continue in our next episode of Bedtime Stories. I hope you enjoyed these stories. It's called Goodnight Stories from the Quran. Really nice, interesting book. You can ask your parents to buy one and you can read it and study it with your younger or your older brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining me today for Bedtime Stories. I hope you have a lovely night. Don't forget to brush your teeth. Don't forget to be comfortable in your pajamas. And I will see you again soon, inshallah. Have a good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.